Duntoon House, now the officers' mess of the Royal Military College, was first built in 1833 as a single-storey homestead. Duntoon House in 1870 had become the two-storied building we see today. Owned by Robert Campbell, Duntoon House was named after the ancestral home of the Campbells in Argyllshire, Scotland. In 1910, Duntoon Station was acquired by the Commonwealth Government as the site for the Royal Military College. Duntoon has become Australia's West Point and in fact the authorities drew largely upon the experience gained by the United States Military Academy when establishing our own military college in 1911. To this college come Australia's military leaders of the future, young men of fine type to train for this leadership. Although Australia's Royal Military College conforms to many of the traditions of the Royal Military Academy at Sandhurst in England, the ideals of Duntoon correspond in many respects to those of West Point. It is the aim of the college to provide for every cadet a balanced and liberal education in the arts and sciences, taking into account the special needs of the service and the aptitude of each cadet. Any one of three courses of civil study is open to a cadet. These cadets are taking general science, which includes comprehensive instruction in chemistry and physics. In the physics laboratory, the cadets conduct experiments that include a study of the stroboscope, the study of optics, the function of the cathode ray oscilloscope and the study of electronics. And in this experiment in ballistics, the velocity of a bullet is measured. The second of the three courses of civil study open to cadets covers science and engineering. Duntoon's engineering laboratories and lecture rooms can match the best in the Commonwealth. Instruction at university level is given in all courses and recognition of civil studies at the Royal Military College has been arranged with Australian universities and technical colleges. Engineering students study under a professor of engineering. The subject the function of the hydraulic dynamometer in determining the power output of an internal combustion engine. Engineering students do a course in turning and fitting and become familiar with the lathe and the shaping machine. The laboratory is equipped with a wide range of testing machinery with which to study many of the problems of engineering. The third course of civil study open to cadets is an arts course, and Duntoon's well-equipped library provides the references which are so valuable to the student during the four years he spends here. In the quietness of his comfortable living quarters, the student is able to supplement his studies, and the personal library plays an important role in the life of a Duntoon cadet. The antidote for any weariness produced by prolonged study can be found in the gymnasium and in Duntoon's well-equipped gym. The cadets keep fit under the guidance of a fully trained army physical instructor. Boxing is a favourite sport of the college, and every student becomes skilled in the art of self-defence. <laughs> Military subjects studied cover training in the use of weapons, which include the service pistol. Up. 
every cadet learns to handle the service rifle. The 25-pounder gun drill reveals to the cadets the potentialities of this efficient weapon. In a similar fashion, the cadet is introduced to all the machinery of war at present being used by the Australian military forces. The practical experience of handling the actual equipment with which wars are fought is supplemented by the study of military history. A cadet lectures his classmates on aspects of the campaign at Gallipoli. Later in a discussion, his arguments may be supported or demolished by his fellow students. There's a strong incentive for each cadet to master his subject thoroughly. First class cadets in the fourth and final year study military tactics in the tactics model room. The aim of these studies is to give to every cadet sufficient knowledge to command a company with the support of battalion weapons and other arms. Many training aids are used in this department and one of the most important is the motion picture screen. Films covering each of the phases of war, attack, Defence and withdrawal are used to supplement lectures and syndicate discussion groups. Lectures and films promote discussion which is designed to correct faulty reasoning and produce correct and concise thinking. Indoor exercises and military procedure are followed by practical experience on the assault course. Physical fitness promoted by carefully planned gymnastics is needed on this course where sure footedness and physical dexterity are vital requirements. receive 75 hours instruction in practical vehicle training. One third of this time is spent in motorcycle training because it's essential that the army be capable of operating over rough country. The cadets are taught to ride across country almost from the commencement of their training. These cadets have completed 25 hours of motorcycle instruction and can handle their machines with confidence. Six selected cadets of the first class are taught to fly each year. The standard achieved at the end of the year is that required for the Civil Aviation Pilot's License. The final flying tests are conducted by a RAF flying examiner. The ability to fly is a valuable qualification for the future Army officer to possess. First class cadets who upon graduation will be allotted for duty with the Royal Australian Army Service Corps, receive instruction in the handling of the duck amphibian truck. This is their first lesson in the water following the completion of their preliminary instruction upon land. An operation usually associated with an advance is the assault river crossing. As part of their engineer training whilst at the Royal Military College, cadets are taught the principles of watermanship. A party of infantry crosses the Malonglo River as part of the initial assault. Well-handled craft result in quick turnaround and the speedy build-up of forces in the bridgehead. Practice charges simulate enemy fire during this exercise. Exercises in the field cover every aspect of modern army technique. The situation in Malaya has produced special methods for dealing with the ambush. The cadets embark in trucks for an exercise in the ambush of a motor transport convoy. The enemy, comprising cadets who have camouflaged themselves, await the arrival of the convoy. The convoy is escorted by two scout cars, one moving ahead of the trucks, the other in the rear. In each truck, the men are prepared to bail out the instant any trouble develops. The enemy allows the leading scout car to pass and awaits the arrival of the first truck. Enemy carelessness arouses the scout car's suspicion.
Those infantrymen who have not been hit bail out and take cover immediately and engage the enemy. The leading scout car swings towards the enemy and retires behind a smoke screen and commences firing. Meanwhile, infantrymen from the second and third trucks are grouped in the timber for an assault on the enemy positions. Mortar fire directed at the machine gunners precedes a bayonet charge and this completes an exercise that has become commonplace as a result of terrorist activity in Malaya. The next exercise is an attack on a strong point the deeply entrenched strong point is concealed in shade and surrounded by barbed wire. The exercise will demonstrate the methods which will be adopted to neutralize this strong point which is holding up the advance. The attacking platoon uses rocket launcher, Bren gun and rifles and a two inch mortar which throws smoke bombs designed to conceal the movements of the cutoff section and the assaulting section. Flamethrower and assault pioneers rush the wire from the positions they've taken under cover of the smoke bombs. A Bangalore torpedo is inserted in the wire and all withdraw to safety. An assault pioneer rushes through the pathway cleared by the explosion and places a demolition charge on the strong point. The exercise is completed with the occupation of the enemy's strong point and the hypothetical destruction of its occupants during their attempted escape from the rear of the strong point. Life for the cadet is full and interesting. In his study bedroom, this cadet dresses for a formal mess night weekly experience which follows closely the traditions of army messes. The conduct of the cadet's mess is modelled on that of an officer's mess and its management and decorum is maintained through a cadet committee. The Queen's and regimental colours are uncased on formal nights which gives the cadets the opportunity to toast their gracious Queen. Each cadet class has its own anteroom and over coffee, discussion is vigorous and stimulating. Recreation facilities are adequate for a full and satisfying life during the four years a cadet spends here at the military college. For those who prefer more serious forms of recreation, there's chess and music appreciation. Some cadets operate VK2RM, the college amateur radio station. Its signals are well known throughout the Commonwealth and overseas. A portrait of Major General Sir William Throsby Bridges, KCB, CMG, hangs in a place of honour within Duntroon House. General Bridges formed the Royal Military College in 1911 and was its first commandant. He died on active service whilst commanding the 1st Division of the AIF in 1915. His remains are interred on Mount Pleasant where his grave is a mecca for visitors to Canberra. Members of the College Camera Club make a permanent record of the grave which overlooks the college buildings. The camera enthusiasts find a wealth of inspiring photographic subjects within a short distance of the college. They photograph Australia's memorial to the United States Armed Forces. The memorial was unveiled by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II during her visit to Australia. They visit the Federal Houses of Parliament the George V Memorial is a must as a subject for the camera of every one of the club's 40 members. And Canberra's War Memorial and its remarkable collection of paintings and relics of the two world wars 
provides a wealth of subject matter for the enthusiastic photographers. Here, the cadet may see presented in dramatic fashion the uniforms and equipment used by past generations of soldiers. memorials exhibits are faithful in detail and the realistic dioramas graphically present outstanding episodes and situations that have become the history of the First World War. All sports are encouraged at Duntroon. The major sports are rugby union and Australian rules football, cricket, hockey, swimming in the college's own pool, athletics, tennis, golf, basketball, sailing in the summer and skiing during the winter months on ski runs that are within easy reach of the college. The college competes with teams from the surrounding districts in many of these sports. Each cadet is expected to take part in a major sport throughout the year and he may engage in as many minor sports as he wishes. There's certainly no limit to the diversity of interest in the life of these cadets. They've formed a dance band and during the year hold informal dances in addition to the three formal balls held each year at the college. Graduates of the Royal Military College have established a splendid record in war and peace. In peace, graduates play an important role in maintaining high standards of efficiency in the army. This efficiency extends to the parade ground, and Duntoon cadets have always been a model of perfection on parade. The trooping of the Queen's colour, presented to the college by Her Majesty during the visit to Australia, give the cadets the opportunity to perform in a spectacular Queen's Birthday Parade. The traditions which have been established by Australia's Royal Military College during the 45 years have been a constant inspiration to the men of the Australian Military Forces. Traditions which have promoted the highest ideals of loyalty, duty and responsibility to the peoples of Australia and the British Commonwealth.